dear earth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again and again and again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen and amen and amen. So good morning, all. Amen. We're together again. Just yeah. praising the Lord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. So we're in the third missionary journey of Paul. Oh. Uh, one of the commentators puts us in the early 50s. Uh, uh, I was born in the mid 50s, but it's not the same. This is uh, AD 53, maybe. Uh, Paul, we've talked about this before, but I haven't said it out loud. Paul has already written the book to Galatians and the first and second Thessalonians. James has already written the book of James. Um, so we're talking, when he's talking to Jewish people, he's using the Torah. But when he's talking to non-Jewish people, he's using his testimony and also his writings. So this is his hometown up here, and we, he's a uh, on a missionary journey, and he's going to. We're going to be talking about uh, Apollos over here in Corinth, and Paul over here in Ephesians. Uh, that takes us. To, so remember, we're I don't know Corinth. twenty something years after Pentecost. Uh, the gospel's going forward. <laughs> We've made missionary journeys, and now we're in Acts 19. Let's try it in New Living, guys. Right. Yeah, so Acts 19, verse 1, NLT. Thank you. Paul's third missionary journey. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast, where he found several believers. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit and you believed? Uh, no, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. Okay. Paul so, said. So let's hold on. Hold on there. So we understand that John the Baptist preached and people heard and were water baptized, and that they took that message from John the Baptist out with them back to their homeland or whatever. So John the Baptist preached, repent, number one. Number two, the Messiah is coming. And number three, live righteously because of the Messiah coming. So... He, it's great preaching, but he kind of misses the death and resurrection of Christ and the baptism in the Spirit. So here we are, and remember, Apollos yesterday is preaching the baptism of John the Baptism until, until Aquila and Priscilla set him right. And then they tell him that the Christ has come, his name is Jesus of Nazareth, and he died for our sins, and he rose again. And then Apollos, the light goes on in his head, and he starts preaching Jesus, not just that Jesus is coming, as in John the Baptist. Well, here's another group of 12 guys. Again, we're 20 years later, and they're huddling together and preaching and living out the baptism of John the Baptist. Got it? So Paul shows up in Ephesus again. We see him briefly making a drive-through in Ephesus in the previous chapter, but now his on his third missionary journey, and he's in Ephesus, he goes to the coast, and he finds several believers. Now, what are they believing in? They're not believing in the Lord Jesus. They're believing in the baptism of John. And he says to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Now, remember, John the Baptist is not preaching about the Holy Spirit. He's preaching about the coming of Jesus. So 
Go ahead. Pastor, I now were these believers disciples of John the Baptist? Yes. Um, okay. Yes. So so they were practicing what they knew and they that were. Jesus had come, but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. And now that makes sense what we read in the previous chapter because we were, remember we were talking about it and we were saying well what were they what did they bring that they uh remember they came on the scene and they they talked to them yep. like they set them straight or i i don't know i forget how it was worded but yeah that's right so well they so were believers they had to, believers had to uh, be sealed with the holy spirit but we're talking about being a, this is being in empowered by the um beyond that so thank you for setting up my next set of thoughts so what happens when somebody says yes jesus be my savior and lord the holy spirit comes to live inside them if they don't have the holy spirit living inside them that's the seal that rich was just talking about then they aren't christians however much they talk so the the born again experience is allowing God to be Lord and Savior of your life. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. But John the Baptist didn't preach the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist preached, get your act together, because Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming. So, so these guys do not have the Spirit indwelling them, but they also do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And again, there's people that say the baptism in the Holy Spirit was a one-time event happening in Acts 2, but they're wrong. Baptism in the Spirit happened uh, in Acts 8, 9, and 10, in 10 with the, uh, with the Gentiles. And here, 20 years later, in Ephesus, with these 12 disciples of John the Baptist. <laughs> so they have been water baptized, but they've been baptized in the thinking of John the Baptist that the, the Savior's coming. Show everybody you're repenting by your baptism, and the Savior is coming, and the Savior is coming, and he is the Messiah. John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John told him, John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later mainly Jesus. So verse five. Five. Uh, as soon as, oh, let's say that again. Paul, John baptism called for repentance, verse four, from sin. But John himself told the people, believe in the one later in Jesus. You're uh, breaking up. Five. They heard this. Huh? Really bad. You're breaking up. I'm muting you. Okay, so as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That all of a sudden, they've spent 20 years of their life, or however long they've been looking forward to the coming of Christ. All of a sudden, and they're gathered together. And I love that part because together they're looking for the, um, the Messiah. So, like Sheila just said on the screen, the John the Baptist has already been beheaded by this time. He never saw the crucifixion or the resurrection of Christ in this earthly body. So, as soon as they heard this, they were water baptized in the name of Jesus, um, signifying their born-again experience. And once they're born again... Paul lays his hands on him, verse 6. Mike, you want to say, read 6, please? Sure. sure. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So, there you go. Yeah, so we got 12. So we, have, so we have 12 guys that are serving their heart's desire to see Messiah come. But Messiah has already come, but they don't know that yet. And so 
Paul comes in and he says, who, what, what's going on? And they say, well, we're following John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, repent, be water baptized, and uh, the Messiah is coming. And Paul says, you got that right. That's what John the Baptist <laughs> But let me tell you that the Christ has come, died, and resurrected, and there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. So these guys are water baptized 20 years after, after Pentecost, and Paul puts his hands on them, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they speak in other tongues, and they prophesy, and there's 12 guys. What an amazing, what an amazing journey for these guys. They're yeah. gathered together by the riverside to talk about the teaching of John the Baptist and about trying to get their act together for the Messiah. And, and when they wake up that morning, they're thinking, we'll go to the river, we'll pray together, we'll talk, and we'll look forward to the Messiah. And by the end of that day, they know the Messiah lives and paid for their sins. They are water baptized into him and then baptized in the Holy Ghost. Their life is radically different than it was even a few hours ago. Yeah. Great story. Um, and like you said, it shows that the spirit came on them years later. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's a good start to a uh, missionary journey, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, he's been to a few towns before. And, and and like we've talked about before, Luke doesn't give us all the stuff. Yeah. Luke gives us what the Spirit lays on his heart. And so this is a long journey from Paul's hometown to Ephesus, and stuff has happened along the way. But the Holy Spirit really wanted us to see this part of the story. Yeah. And we've, so, we've seen the, the gospel at this point, by the time the third journey, we've seen it just going like wildfire yeah. uh, out of all these other communities that he's already been to. And by the this time, it's just amazing how it continues. This 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 book, it, it just shows the Holy Spirit all over it from, from the beginning till now. It just shows how God has moved many, many men in different directions, in different ministries, and just just how how great the Holy Spirit has uh, has influenced these guys to influence us this Amen. many years later that we're still talking about it. Amen. And Rich, still learning. Back. What are your comments on this, Rich? Just dropped it out, huh? I did drop yeah. out. Sorry about that. I just again, it's another weak uh, network signal, I guess. But um, can you hear me now? Yeah. What's your comments on okay. these other verses? Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's uh, it's um, quite a um, an amazing set of events that uh, the Holy Spirit baptism would um be yeah. that these people could be believers for so long without the uh power of, of the lord uh that is available through the holy spirit um and yet they did have they did receive for their purposes apparently enough to keep their faith going that's right um but once of course they they became immersed in the spirit then of course they take on a whole set of additional capacities that's right. So they have be, remained passionate to this preaching of John the Baptist for all of these years. Like, we, we really like dedication. And part of the joy for me as a pastor is when people show up. If you, if you tell me about how great you are, then show up, because showing up matters. And, they had a hunger. They had these guys. Exactly right. And these guys have showed up every day until Acts 19 when they come to understand what they've been thinking about. I can just imagine the buzz in these in these 12, and I imagine they're real good friends. They've done this all together. 
And all of a sudden, they are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and and their conver their dinner afterwards, like when Jesus impacts a life, it impacts a life, and then the families around it, and then the circles around it. And these guys are now loving Jesus, whom that this morning they were only loving the hope of Jesus. So their life is radically changed. They have personally met the Lord Jesus. They have personally been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And their 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 worldview, their world life is radically changed. And now they can serve Jesus. And like Mike said, this is a great start to a missionary journey, even if it's a, a middle of a missionary journey. Yeah. Good morning, Mayan. Welcome with us. So here Good we have morning. here we have this wonderful. Now let, let's talk also. Paul often went to the waterfront to preach or to the <laughs> riverfront, whatever that was. He went to the synagogue, he went to the riverfront, and sometimes he just went downtown, downtown Main Street. Sometimes yeah. uh, without being irreligious here. In in um, in Athens, he went to the coffee shops. He yeah. he went to the people where the people were just were just talking about stuff, the the current events or whatever. So so the Lord Jesus met people through Paul in the synagogue, down by the water at Main Street, wherever wherever there was a conversation going on. Paul came and touched their lives by by listening to them and by telling them about the love of Jesus. If you listen long enough, you will find a connection that leads you into telling people about Jesus. If you yeah. if you try to speak too soon, you'll miss the connection. The scriptures tell us be quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to anger. And if we do that, all of a sudden, so Paul is led by the Spirit to this waterfront prayer meeting, and 12, 12 souls are changed, and 12 circles of friends, because these guys have been telling people for years, get right, repent. John the Baptist says that Jesus is coming, and when, and now, like, whoa, we got it. He is here. He's forgiven our sins. He's water baptized us. He's baptized us in the Holy Spirit. Life is wonderful. Yeah. We don't got to look forward to the resurrection, crucifixion and resurrection of Christ anymore. We got it today. We got yeah. it. Yay. I just added all of that, <laughs> but that's the sense of what we're seeing here. So in yeah. seven verses, we see the Holy Spirit working we see the right questions. We see people looking forward to Christ being receiving Christ, being water baptized, and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Wow! Yeah. What a day! What yeah. a day! It's interesting yeah. too that um, the uh, number twelve is brought up. So we've yes. spoken before. The number twelve is associated with kingdom events, yes. whereas the number seven is the number of divine completion. Uh, 12 often refers to uh, the kingdom. And here we have uh, people who are now say we, we could say they were uh, certainly um, the door to uh, salvation was certainly open to them because they were sealed with the spirit. But now being fully indwelled by the spirit now, now it's it's sort of that sense of now we're full, uh, fully um, made citizens of the kingdom. Yeah. Sort of like being a resident in the States for a while, but eventually you want to become a citizen. Uh, yeah, and once you turn once you turn that corner, then you're then you're really in. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Pastor, yes. I didn't I I don't have this version up, but does it say um disciples of John? I I, I don't have this version. Um baptism well, yeah the disciples of john i don't know if that yeah. uses 
disciples. Yeah, no, I just, I, uh, the other, uh, I had read it that it said in a different um, version, they were disciples of John. But yes, the and they I were, know. they were disciples of John the Baptist. Yeah. Or disciples of the teaching of John the Baptist anyway. Right, right, right. Lord, we thank you for loving yeah, us. Yeah, no, the Amplified, the Amplified verse 4 says, Paul said, John performed a baptism of repentance, continually yes. telling people to believe. Amen. Yeah. Believe in we him could, that is coming. Yeah, we could go through different versions, and I'm sure it would be worded different, but me, meaning the same. I mean, I, I see the Holy Spirit over all these journeys, every action, the fact that Paul goes and meets people where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a street ministry, go spend a night out there with them. You know? Yeah. Lord, mm -hmm. we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. Let us walk in the joy of the spirit. Let us choose joy in our lives. We give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for giving us this day, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our lives, for the guidance, Lord. Continue to guide us by your Holy Spirit. Help us to live out what you have for us each day, each moment, Lord God. Bring us to the ministries you had us called to lord god and help us go to a level that we can reach people lord help us not to be religious but help us to be disciples of you lord how you would have us act and talk and not talk and all that you would have us do we give you this day and we thank you in jesus name amen amen Amen. Yes, thank you again, Lord, for the instruction you've provided for us here through these stories that uh, from so long ago that are still so relevant today that we have this, uh, this uh, gift of the Holy Spirit sealed on us and ultimately, uh, if we pursue it, filled in us. Yes. And with that, the power to uh, do your will as you would have uh, us uh, follow it. And we, we pray then by the Holy Spirit for your continued guidance that we might live lives that glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. And like Amen. Mike said, 